Okay, so let's do the simple math. All right, so here's the uh, insulator. It's a charge desk for a two pound machine. And it's going to be positively charged. So this becomes the source of the electric field. So the electric field lines are going to be pointing to the left as well as to the right. A vector which is perpendicular to the air. And this is the same as in normal. The surface that we were dealing with in physics one. All right, so what do we do? In order to figure out the strength of the electric field, what we do is we do a Gaussian. This look at a certain region, so I'm going to draw my Gaussian here. This is my Gaussian surface. And the only stuff that I'm going to be interested in is the strength of the electric field intercepted by the ends that you're looking at. All right, so we're looking at the area here. We're looking at the area here, and we're looking at the area here. That's intercepting the electric field. All right, so let's try to do this. So according to Gaussian, this is what we use. The next charge on the inside is going to be responsible for the electric field. And so what that means is you're looking at the circle here, which says that just integrate it in the counterclockwise direction. So here's my region. So I'm just going to integrate this region that you're looking at in this direction. All right, so there's nothing happening in this region, and there's nothing happening in this region. All right, you have an area vector in this direction that's perpendicular to the electric field, so it's not going to contribute. There's an area vector which is perpendicular to the electric field, it's not going to contribute. Okay, so you can just traverse in this direction. So things start to happen right here. Notice that the electric field and the area vectors are in the same direction. So that's what I'm going to I'm going to focus on at this point. So E and A, it represents the magnitude of the area on the right. So I'm dealing with this portion of it. And then nothing is happening in this region for the reasons that I explained. So area, once again, is 90 degrees to the electric field, so it doesn't mean anything. So as I'm traversing it in this direction, I get to this point. Notice that the electric field as well as the area vectors are to the left. So I keep on with my summation. So the electric field is to the left. The area is also to the left. So the entire summation, the integral the summation, is going to equal to the net charge on the inside divided by the epsilon naught. All right, so the net charge is the charge that we are dealing with here. So that's the net charge. Yeah. OK, so. This is straightforward. Negative times negative is going to be positive. So what do we have? We will have 2 times E times A equaling net charge divided by 0. All right, so solve for the strength of the electric field. And when we solve for the strength of the electric field, obviously, we do divide both sides by 2 and then A. And that's what we're doing. So the strength of the electric field is going to be Q divided by 2 epsilon naught A. And what does that mean? What that means is the following. So this is the net charge. Distribute it over this area. So, what does that represent? It represents the charge density, the surface charge density. So, the net charge distributed onto the surface area is going to give you the surface charge density. All right, so do a back substitution. And we are done. That's it. Straightforward. It's easy math, easy work. All right, so this is the strength of the electric field of a charged insulating sheet. All right, the mathematics is straightforward, but math is not physics, guys. All right, so math is not physics. All right, so this is how you do the math. Okay, so having said that, here's a really, really, really tough question. If it's a metal, if it's metal, the electric field on the inside is going to be zero, right? All right, can you figure out the strength of the electric field on the outside? All right, so this has to be some kind of a metallic enclosure. That's the reason why the strength of the electric field is zero. Or it could be a piece of metal. It doesn't matter. Inside, the strength of the electric field is going to be zero. So the net charge is going to be on the outside. Okay. So the mathematics is going to be exactly the same as before, so I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to shoot it at this point. All right, so instead of repeating the math, I've already done the work for you, so I'm just going to... Cheap, cheap, cheap. All right, so I think the work is here. Cute. All right, so the work is already here. So this, uh, this is for a non-conductive sheet. All right, so this is the one that we've been discussing. All right, so what do we have? So you got the net charge located right here. So this is positive charge, Q that you're looking at. So this is the work that we just did, and this is the result that we came up with. Okay, so what if it's a metal piece? It's a piece of metal. So if it's a piece of metal, what is the electric field strength of this piece of metal? Okay, to, to do. How do you do that? Oh, I was hoping that I had that. Okay. Oh, I have it here. Q. All right. So it's the same idea. All right. So this is a metal piece. Inside, the strength of the electric field is zero. 
So the net charge is going to be on the outside. So you put your gaussian right here. And when you place your gaussian right here, so what do you have? When you place your gaussian right there, all right, so the net charge on the inside is going to be right here. All right, so your net charge is right here. So that net charge is going to be responsible for the electric field in this direction, and the area vector in this direction. Electric field is from left to right, it's in this direction, and then so the area vector here is perpendicular to the electric field, so it's not going to have any contribution. Once again, it's the same rule. You do your integration in this direction, in the counterclockwise direction. You will find the contribution only within this region. So notice that within this region, you have the strength of the electric field times the area. That's, that's what gives you a plus. And here's the net charge on the inside. All right, so isolate E from here. When you do that, this is the formula that you come up with. Q divided by A is going to be your surface charge density. And here's the formula that you come up with. Surface charge density divided by epsilon naught is going to be the strength of the electric field on a charge map. That's it. The weird thing is, if it's a flat surface just like this one is, notice that this is a flat surface, the charges will be uniformly distributed on the surface. So if it's a flat surface, the charges will be uniformly distributed, which means that the strength of the electric field is going to be a constant, only for a flat surface, just like that. All right, so I'm talking about capacitors. This, here's what I'm talking about. This is a parallel plate capacitor. Notice that this plate is going to positive charge. You're dealing with a flat surface. This region is flat. So which means that the charges will be uniformly distributed. What that means is the electric strength of the electric field is going to be uniform. So if this is uniform, if the charges are uniformly distributed, the electric field strength is going to be constant. Got it? So this is your capacitor. And inside a capacitor, the strength of the electric field is going to be constant, provided that you have these flat, smooth surfaces. And that's what you're having. All right, so this is an expression that would come out of math. So the question is, why would the strength of the electric field constant on these flat surfaces? That's, that would be your test question. OK, strength of the electric field, is, strength of the electric field will be constant if the charges are uniformly distributed, which means that the charges will be equal distances to each other, right? That's what it means. And which means that the strength of the electric field due to these charges parallel to the surface will cancel out. The components of the electric fields parallel to the surface will cancel out. The only surviving component is going to be the perpendicular component. All right, so this was something that we discussed before. OK. OK, so uh, the shape of the tip of the lightning rod is going to matter because the sharp edges, as well as the pointy edges, will have a much larger charge density. Right? OK, so based on the last one that we came up with, what happens to the strength of the electric field when you increase the charge density? When you increase this, when you increase this charge density, what happens to the strength of the electric field? The electric field is going to get stronger, right? So it becomes more attractive. Charge density around the shape, around the sharp edges, as well as the tip, is going to be much, much, much larger, which means that the tip and the sharp edges tend to be a lot more attractive to lightning because the strength of the electric field is going to go up. The electric field is going to get stronger and stronger near the sharp edges as well as the tip. All right, does metal on your body attract lightning? Um, it's not the size of the metal. It's the shape of the metal that may attract lightning. Okay, so you don't want anything which has sharp edges or extremely thorny. So that's what you need to avoid in terms of attracting lightning. Question number 10, does the strength of the electric field change within a capacitor, or does it remain constant? Inside a capacitor, charge density is going to be constant on the metal piece, as long as it's flat. So which means that the strength of the electric field is going to be constant. All right, it's towards the metal. If these, if these are infinitely big sheets, obviously it's going to be constant all the way through. But because of the fact that the, these uh, metal plates have finite sizes, around the edges it's not going to be constant, but towards the metal it's going to be fairly constant. But, we don't have to worry about that in, that in this class because this is still a freshman moment. Too. Okay, so this is good enough. All right, so what's left over? There's one more concept left over before we jump into the next discussion. So if the charge distribution is constant, the charge is uniformly distributed, the strength of the electric field is going to remain constant. So inside a capacitor, the strength of the electric field is going to remain constant. That's what it means. If the strength of the electric field is constant, then if you place charges here, they're going to experience a constant acceleration, constant force, constant acceleration. So their motions will be uniform. All right. Problem number six. Okay, so we're looking at the nucleus of the gold atom. I don't want to do this numerically, but there is a derivation that I want to use that you will need in solving problems on Sunday. Okay, so this is the last topic that we will get to treat in this one. All right, so what do we have? We've got a nucleus atom. 
I'd say on a radius, the radius is known. It's 6.2 times 10 minus 15. All right, so that's 10 to the minus 15. So that's the size of the nucleus. It's got a net charge. Z is the number of positive charges of the proton, so it's going to be 79. So the net charge is going to be positive. So it says that the plot, the magnitude, magnitude of the electric field from the center of the golden nucleus outward to a distance of about twice its weight. All right, so what happens to strengthen the magnetic field when you start to plot it from the center of the nucleus all the way to the outside, almost twice its distance? Of its original radius. That's what it is. All right, assume that the nucleus is spherical and the charge is distributed uniformly throughout the long. Right by here. All right, so the solution you will find in here. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. All right, so I'll just go to the handout for my lecture notes. All right, so that's universal physics to optimize what you need. All right, so what does it say? Um, before I do the problem, I don't want to write down everything that you see here, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit. So we are assuming a uniform charge distribution, so that's uniformly distributed. And case number one, we're going to be looking at the strength of the electric field outside the radius of this, okay, nucleus. All right, so the radius is located right here, so it's the radius. I'm going to place my Gaussian outside of this region, and then I'm going to check to see what the strength of the electric field is, so you can see the work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the nucleus. All right, so this R is going to locate, once again, our Gaussian, so this is lowercase r. And then there we're going to come up with an expression for what happens inside the Gaussian. So this is the sort of stuff that we will come up with. All right, and then you will notice that these two equations are the same, except this charge is the net charge, and this is the net charge inside the Gaussian. So somehow this net charge inside the Gaussian is going to get expressed in terms of the net total charge. Okay, so that's the game that we will get the point. All right, this thing is going to take about five minutes. It shouldn't take more than that. And then by the time we're done with it, it's going to look like this. All right, so here's the strength of the electric field, and this is the radial distance. Inside the radius, this is the radius of the nucleus, the electric field is going to increase all the way to the perimeter of, all the way to the edge of this nucleus. Right? So radial is going to increase. Once you're outside, it's just going to diminish inversely. That's what we will get to see. Right? So there's very diminished inversely. All right, so. All right, now that I told you what I'm going to do, I will do it. All right, so 